Welcome to Studio Fabricana. I'm Miles, and before we get started today, I just want to give a big shout out to all our followers who are keeping the craft of sewing uh, alive and well. Um, today we're going to be looking at an exposed zipper uh, DIY. Now the exposed zipper that we're doing isn't just where you have the exposed teeth, we're actually doing one where the whole zipper is stitched outside and has the exposed zipper tape as well. So all we need today is our skirt backs because we're doing a center back zipper on a skirt. So we've got our two skirt backs. We've sewn the darts and we've finished the side seams. We finished our little uh, vent edge and we finished the hem with the serger. If you don't have a serger, you can use your own favorite uh, seam finishing technique. We have two pieces of fusible interfacing that are one inch wide and the length of the zipper and we have our zipper, um, a nice uh, metal zipper. Um, if you're gonna do an exposed zipper, you might as well have something that's very eye-catching. So I'm gonna take the fusible interfacing, I'm gonna meet you over at the iron. All right, so here we are at, here we are at the ironing board. We have our piece of fusible interfacing that's cut one inch wide and the length of the zipper. Now what I mean about that is it goes from the top of the zipper tape to the zipper stopper. And here's our glue side with the interfacing. We're going to place that where we're going to be sewing our zipper. And you can just gently get that in place. We have our iron set to a wool setting to activate the glue. And we're just going to press down about half of the tape and hold it for about five to ten seconds and then we're going to lift our iron and press the rest of it. You never want to slide your iron while you're using interfacing because it can bubble or slide and become a big mess. So we're going to let that cool and then we'll be ready to start sewing. All right, so we've got where our zipper is going. We have our fusible interfacing. We've basted three quarters of an inch from the edge. I have marked on my skirt, there's a vent. So we want to stitch to where the vent opening starts. And we're going to follow that stitching line to our zipper notch. I have put a couple of pins in. I've changed my stitch length to two and a half, a normal stitch length for sewing, because uh, I had set it for basting earlier gonna line up my needle to the point of my vent. I'm gonna get the needle in there. I'm gonna do a bit of back stitching to secure that. I'm gonna continue along my center back seam. My zipper opening is here. I'm gonna stitch right to that point and then back stitch to secure that. So once we've finished our seam allowance below the zipper, we're going to turn our skirt over and we're going to press the seam allowance where the zipper is actually going. Now at this point, we're going to be pressing along our basting. As you recall, we basted it at three quarters of an inch. So we're just going to be pressing a three quarters of an inch seam allowance here. So I'm just going to make sure to retouch these here, make sure we've got it pressed nice and flat. 
And the reason for the difference between our 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance here and our 3 quarter inch seam allowance here is we need a gap where the zipper teeth actually sit. So this extra quarter inch that we've gained here is where the teeth of the zipper will sit. Okay. So now that we have pressed our 3 quarters of an inch back, we're ready to start pinning our zipper in place. So notice we have the zipper upside down, so the pull is down. And we're going to put that under the skirt pieces, and we're essentially going to line up the top of the tape with the top edge of our skirt. I'm going to pin that in place. And the folded edge of our fabric goes right along the zipper tape. Our uh, stopper at the bottom of the zipper goes to our zipper notch at the bottom. And we basically do that for both sides. The pins are just to keep it in place while we're sewing. And if you feel more comfortable with more pins, go for it, whatever you're comfortable with. I think I'll be happy with just the four pins. And now we're ready to go back to the sewing machine. All right, so we've got our zipper pinned in place. I've switched to a zipper foot and I've switched to a basting stitch because this stitch we're doing right now is just gonna hold the zipper in place so that when we do our top stitching on the face, everything is perfectly in place so we don't have to worry about anything moving. So with the pin in, I'm just gonna get my zipper foot in place. I'm gonna start stitching. Now I don't need to be very close to the teeth right now and actually don't want to because that's where I'm gonna be sewing um, when I'm doing the top stitching. So you just wanna be doing kind of right around the middle of your zipper tape. And we're just going to baste, remove the pen. We'll continue basting. We're keeping the folded edge really close to the teeth, but we're sewing about a quarter inch away from the teeth. Now that I've got past the top of the zipper, I'm gonna close it so that we don't have any trouble getting past the head of the zipper. Easier said than done sometimes. And there we are. So now the head is out of the way. I'm gonna continue basting. This doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be pulling it out later, but you do wanna make sure you have that folded edge perfectly lined up to the teeth of your zipper. And remove the other pin. Gonna go right down to the bottom. A little couple of stitches past the bottom. I'm gonna leave my needle in and pivot. Remove the next pin. I'm going to stitch across the bottom of the tape, probably about two or three stitches past. I'm going to leave my needle in again and pivot, and I'm going to continue basting up the other side of the zipper. And I'm going to need to move the zipper head out of the way again so we can finish this. That was easier. I'm going to remove my last pin and continue basting right to the top of the zipper. So looking from the um, front of our skirt now, here's the back where we've done our basting. We can kind of see it's starting to look like the finished product, but what you can see right now is this big seam allowance is showing and we obviously don't want to see that, so we're going to trim that away. So what I'm going to do is roll the seam allowance around and I'm going to trim with a nice uh, pair of sharp scissors, I'm going to trim very close to that basting stitch. So now that we have trimmed that little seam allowance, we are going to stitch um, very close to the teeth now. 
So we need to switch back to our regular uh, stitch length of 2.5. I'm actually going to move my needle position a little bit closer to the edge of my zipper foot. I'm going to put my presser foot down. I'm going to start stitching. Now just be very, very careful. You've got these big metal pieces. You don't want your needle to go into those. And I've got my zipper head out of the way to get started. And once I'm partway down my zipper, I'm going to leave my needle in, raise my presser foot, close the zipper past the zipper foot. And then I'll continue stitching with the presser foot down. So as we get closer to the end of the zipper, we're just going to walk it slowly so we're nice and accurate. About one stitch past the bottom, we're going to leave the needle in, put our presser foot back down, and stitch across the bottom. And then the needle in, we pivot again, and then we can start back up the other side. As we get back to the top of our zipper, we're going to stop sewing again with the needle in the lower position. We're going to open the zipper, get the head out of the way, put our presser foot back down, continue sewing, again being very careful not to stitch into that big stopper. We don't want to break a needle. We'll just sewing, continue sewing right off the edge of the zipper. So the next step is to remove the basting that was holding the zipper in place while we were doing our stitching. So the final thing we need to do is stitch down the edge of the zipper tape so it's nice and clean. And we want to get as close to that edge without going over it. So I have switched back to my regular presser foot. I've put away the zipper foot. Um, the stitch length is still at 2.5 and I'm lining up the edge of my zipper tape with kind of the marking that's just to the right of the center of my presser foot. And I'm gonna start again, just lining the edge of the zipper tape to that marking that's just to the right of my needle. And we've got our zipper head out of the way as we continue down the zipper. When we're about halfway down, we can close the zipper, get the head out of the way, and continue. Now you notice at the end we have these little flappy ends, and we definitely don't want that on our finished skirt. So what we're going to do before we get to the end is we're going to tuck those ends under. Again, I probably should have given myself a bit more space, but we'll make it work. There we go. So I'm going to continue sewing along that edge, leave the needle in so we can turn, and then we're going to fold back the other tape. And we're just going to sew close to that folded edge that we've just created. And leave the needle right in the corner there. And pivot. And continue stitching up back towards the top of the zipper. And then just like we did on the other side, when we get about halfway up, we're going to leave the needle down. We're going to open our zipper so the head is out of the way. And we will continue stitching right to the top of our zipper. So for the purposes of our demonstration, we were only looking at the skirt back, but obviously once you sew the side seams to the front of your skirt and add your waistband, the back of your skirt will look like this and you'll be rocking a very funky uh, exposed zipper and a new skirt. So thank you so much for joining us today and we will see you next time.